Um, thank you, Pamela, and, uh, and thanks for everyone for turning up to have a listen to what we've got to talk about today. Um, simplified case-by-case -case prescribing of antibiotics um, for clinical mastitis in New Zealand. This is, this is our experience of doing that. An overview, clinical mastitis in New Zealand is a little bit different to most of the rest of the, the world. We're a pasture-based system. Um, we seasonally carve cows. Um, most of our mastitis is caused by um, streps and staphs. Traditionally, we think of mastitis as being strep in the spring, staph in the summer. So strep in the early, in the pre-carving, in the, sorry, peri-carving period, and then we start getting staphs coming through later on, or at least that's been our traditional thinking. Um, and uh, so what we've tended to do um, as veterinarians is, is we prescribe short-acting drugs um, to treat what is predominantly strep uberus in the spring. In New Zealand, strep uberus is a, a, a relatively easy um, bacterial infection to cure. Um, we have lots of genetic diversity. It, it appears to be a strictly an environmental um, pathogen in New Zealand and cures very quickly. So we tend to use very short-acting um, drugs, which uh, Talking, uh, listening to Pamela's uh, talk yesterday, it fits in with AMR, but the reality is that the reason we started doing that was strictly economics. Um, we, we have available a, a one gram penicillin in a mammary in New Zealand. Um, it's very cheap to buy. It has a very, very short treatment course, um, relatively short withhold, and we get the milk back into the vat um, in about uh, five or six days. Um, there has been this concern around penicillinase and penicillin resistance in the staphs. So we've tended to, to go to something uh, that our farmers certainly describe as stronger and longer for treatments um, for staph um, or suspected staph cases in the summer. Um, the one little thing that concerned me is, is uh, yes, I am from New Zealand now, but uh, if anyone from the Southern Hemisphere, I understand my accent is actually Australian. Um, and I've only been in New Zealand for five years. So we're told that this is the way that we treat clinical mastitis with, with something short and, and uh, sharp in the spring and only add in the longer drugs um, in summer for, for when we're concerned about staph. But our national sales data would tell us that about 80% of the drugs that we sell in New Zealand um, are, uh, are specifically targeted in our situation for staphs. In New Zealand, we've developed our own, we call it a traffic light scenario. Um, this is based um, quite closely on the World Health Organization. There is one little adjustment that we've made in the New Zealand situation, and that's because we've, we've included pro or separated procaine penicillin and penenthamate um, and put them in a green category as a, as a category that's less important. Now, we've done that in New Zealand because the, the medicos in New Zealand do not use um, straight penicillin anymore. It is a drug that is important in other parts of the world, particularly in, in developing countries. Um, it's where it's used uh, um, to treat syphilis. Um, we don't have very much syphilis in our human population in New Zealand, thankfully, um, and also the detection limits for penicillin um, in our milk products are very, very low. So the chances of, of us having some influence on uh, on AMR by penicillin use in New Zealand, our food production industry is considered quite small. Most of the drugs that, uh, that we sell, 80%, are either cloxacillin, cloxacillin containing, or contain a macrolide. So one part of uh, the study that we were trying to look at was, was were the bugs that we we're causing um, clinical mastitis in New Zealand in the same type of proportion as the way we were prescribing our antibiotics. If we knew what was uh, in our New Zealand situation, if we knew the cause before we prescribed, for, for streps and CNS, which are the majority of our infections, we'd, we would prescribe procaine penicillin, something short, something a green antibiotic of less importance to human health. If we knew it was Staph aureus before we started, we would prescribe something stronger and longer. But how could we tell the difference and how could we tell which was which? Now, this, this trial started about three or four years ago and we wanted this to be something that was very practically based. Um, we, uh, we didn't have uh, a commercially available um, micro kit or, or PCR available and we wanted it to be cost effective so that we could repeat this ongoing on all of our farms or in all our veterinary clinics. This was not designed to, for, 
just to be a trial. The problem was is when I was at university, I spent much more time studying in this environment than I did studying in this environment. And, and I'm a dairy farmer um, as much as I am a veterinarian. I've actually milked cows for more years than I've vetted them. So we wanted to come up with some kind of system um, that would allow us just to break the bacteria down into these treatment groups, because these are the treatment groups that are important to us in New Zealand. So we, uh, we read through the, uh, the NMC manual and we simplified some, some uh, decision-making trees with some very simple tests that would allow us to be able to just break the bacteria down into those basic treatment um, categories. Our study was broken up into two parts. The first part was we wanted to look at the incidence of the different causative microbes over the five major dairying areas of New Zealand. And the second one was we wanted to compare treatment cure rates of a case-by-case -case prescribing um, versus the traditional level of traditional approach of a herd-based system where we prescribed antibiotics based on the stage of lactation of the animal. The results from the first part, this is in the abstract, so I'll race through this as quick as I can. We had 15,000 cows, we had 767 cows with a, a case of clinical mastitis in the first 120 days post-calving. Now, 120 days um, was chosen because most of our mastitis occurs peri-calving in New Zealand. Um, 120 days meant that our post-treatment samples were all finished before everyone decided to go away for Christmas. The average incidence within the herds, 5.1% um, um, over that period of time. The causative isolates, strep uberus, 43%. Staph aureus, 15%. Now, I draw your attention to staph aureus because about 80% of the drug sales that we have in New Zealand are focused towards Staph aureus, and Staph aureus was only causing about 15% um, of our infections. The other thing, just looking, uh, listening to some of the presentations over the last couple of days, the other thing that I just wanted to bring to your attention was it was only 8% of um, cases where we couldn't find a causative bacteria, um, which was significantly lower um, than what has been reported um, from other countries. Okay, so the case-by-case case versus whole herd prescribing, the second part of the study. In the case-by-case case prescribing, um, we used procaine penicillin, um, one gram of procaine penicillin into mammary as the first up treatment. Um, on label, that is, uh, it is one gram um, per treatment at 12-hour treatment intervals for three treatments, so one and a half days only of treatment. Um, and we only added in a, a product called Penclox, which is um, a New Zealand-specific product at the moment, which is procaine penicillin plus cloxacillin. Um, we only added that in if we um, grew Staph aureus. Um, and we added that in for three more treatments to give us a total treatment time of five days. In the herd-based system, uh, a traditional system, we use procaine penicillin um, in the peri-carving period, and we use cloxacillin um, after that. Now, procaine penicillin, as I said, was a one and a half day treatment interval. The cloxacillin was a five by 24 day treatment, 24 hour treatment interval, so a five day treatment interval. Um, and we used a seven day changeover period because that's what sales data was telling us must have been happening um, in, uh, in the commercial environment to be able to give us the, the, uh, the sales data that we were seeing. We took samples pre-treatment, we took samples post-treatment. Now, these were taken by the farmers. Um, they were taken at 14 days and 21 days post-treatment. Um, we did look at clinical cure. Um, we didn't place much emphasis on it. Clinical cure was assessed by the farmer um, at the end of withhold. Now, depending on which drug we were using, the withhold date was different, but we included it anyway. We looked at bacteriological cure, um, and we put all that together to give us a, a case cure. The results across the whole lot, um, basically um, what we found was that case-by-case uh, case prescribing had no worse um, cure rate than our traditional system. Now, we weren't looking for it to have a better um, cure rate. We were looking for it to have no worse. The reason we were looking for it to have no worse is because there was lots of added advantages um, of using um, the case-by-case case prescribing. We knew we were going to use less antibiotics by design. We knew we were going to be shifting antibiotic use from orange or red category drugs back into green category drugs. We actually got a, a numerically superior result, 
um, but statistically not different. Um, we are going to daily doses, which is the way that uh, we've chosen to look at antibiotic use. Um, we use 0.8 of a dose um, less antibiotic um, in the uh, in the case-by-case um, -case group, and we changed another daily dose of antibiotic from yellow to green, which doesn't sound like a, a massive amount. Um, we, but when you apply that to the national herd of New Zealand with 500 cows um, and a 10% national mastitis incidence, it means that we'd actually use 400,000 less daily doses of antibiotic, and we'd change another half a million daily doses from yellow to green. And just on a little side note, it would, because of the shorter withholding period or the shorter tr total treatment time, um, we'd be throwing away or discarding somewhere around um, three to eight million dollars less milk if we implement, implemented um, this nationally. One of the things that you can do when you put in as many numbers into a trial as what we, we did is you can actually look at the performance of the different, um, different drugs um, in relation to the, the different bacteria types. Strep uberus um, was the most common um, bacteria that we isolated. Um, it was treated with either penicillin um, or cloxicillin, depending on uh, which group the cows were in. Um, when uh, penicillin was used, um, Cloxacillin was only used in cows that were calved more than seven days. So technically, we probably the statisticians will tell me that I should only really compare the the, the penicillin use um, to the cloxacillin in the cows that got penicillin more than seven days calved. When we do that, we ended up with a 14% difference, p-value of 0 0.06. But when we looked at the the penicillin use before or after the seven-day increment, it was uh, it was no different um, in the the cure rate with penicillin. So we kind of said, putting my clinical hat on, that I can probably reasonably um, compare all penicillin use to all cloxicillin use. And when we do, we get a very similar 14, 15% difference, um, but a very significant result. Um, now, this was something that did, a result that did surprise us a little bit, because remember what we're doing here is we're comparing one and a half days of treatment versus five days of treatment, both time-dependent antibiotics. So we were using one and a half days of a green antibiotic, a narrow spectrum antibiotic, and an, uh, an antibiotic that's cheaper for the farmer to buy and we, one that we throw less milk away from, compared to five days to a more expensive antibiotic, the one that we commonly use, more important in human health, um, with a longer treatment time. And we ended up with a better result um, with, the, with the short drug. In the case of Staph aureus, now we're really keen to have a look at this because we know we do have penicillin-resistant Staph aureus in New Zealand. Well, that was the traditional thinking. Um, when we did that, it's a busy slide, I understand, but basically when we had penicillin, we followed it on by the pen clock, so that's a, effectively a five-day penicillin course with the last three days concurrently treatment with cloxicillin, we actually ended up with a far superior result than using the cloxicillin on its own. And just the, the little group up the top there, the penicillin, the seven out of 22, there was actually three cows that, uh, that we were not sure. Um, they were recorded as only having had penicillin when in, they should have had penicillin followed on by the, the pen clocks. If those cows did indeed only get penicillin and we included those numbers in there and we, that becomes 10 out of 25, um, we actually get a p-value of 0 0.06 comparing just one and a half days of straight penicillin to five days of cloxicillin in the case of Staph aureus. Race through there. So in summary, case-by-case -case prescribing has better outcomes um, in the New Zealand situation than the traditional herd-based system, um, system we've traditionally used. Um, penicillin outperformed cloxicillin in regards to strep uberus and penicillin followed by the penicillin cloxicillin combination absolutely outperformed cloxicillin in regards to Staph aureus. As I said at the start, I, I am actually Australian living in New Zealand. Um, in Australia, we've always marketed ourselves as, as coming from the lucky country. I actually think New Zealand's a bit of a lucky country as well. Um, we, we have Beautiful scenery, we have lovely beaches, the fishing's great, the skiing's wonderful. And we also have this wonderful dairy industry, um, five million 
cows out on pasture and a wonderful place to work. It's a wonderful place to be as a dairy vet, but one of the other reasons I think that we're such a lucky country in New Zealand um, is that we have access to a one gram of penicillin um, to treat in a mammary infections. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.